Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And I'm back, back in LA, back here recording in my home base with my lovely little chair and my amazing microphone, which was sorely missed in Charleston. So I'm here in Charleston, South Carolina. So I'm sure a lot of you have been following the story as I have, but as of me recording this video, it looks like Peregrine, the lunar lander from Astrobotic, will not be completing its mission and landing on the moon. And it's currently being redirected back towards Earth where it will meet its fiery demise in our atmosphere. Because we probably shouldn't have a rogue spacecraft wandering aimlessly through space if we can help it. So what went wrong here? What was the goal of Peregrine and what happened that caused it to meet its fiery demise here on Earth rather than a soft landing on the moon? Yikes, let's get into it. Peregrine Mission 1 is an American lunar lander named after the bird of prey with the same name, built by a company called Astrobotic Technology and selected as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services, in which NASA contracts with a commercial partner, in this case Astrobotic, that provides the launch and lander. It is the first US-built lunar lander launched since the crewed lunar module from the Apollo program, and it was carrying scientific payloads to deliver to the moon with the objective of studying the lunar exosphere, thermal properties, and hydrogen abundance of the lunar regolith, magnetic fields, and the radiation environment, according to NASA. It had a planned 46-day trajectory towards the moon, during which it would then enter orbit around the moon and then prepare for a lunar landing. And the landing was planned for February 23rd of this year. So with this plan in place, Peregrine launched on January 8th, 2024, at around 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time atop the Vulcan Centaur, a two-stage heavy-lift launch vehicle developed by United Launch Alliance. And liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. Two good SRBs hitting peak pressure on the SRBs. However, pretty quickly, it appeared that there were issues. Four hours after launch, Astrobotic released the first of many statements saying, After successfully separating from United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket, Astrobotic's Peregrine Lunar Lander began receiving telemetry via the NASA Deep Space Network. Astrobotic built avionics systems, including the primary command and data handling unit, as well as the thermal propulsion and power controllers, all powered on and performed as expected. After successful propulsion systems activation, Peregrine entered a fully operational state. Unfortunately, an anomaly occurred, which prevented Astrobotic from achieving a stable sun-pointing orientation. The team is responding in real time as the situation unfolds and will be providing updates as data is obtained and analyzed. And as time passed and more updates were released, it became clear that the Vulcan Centaur had suffered a major propellant leak. Later that same day, they released another statement saying that thrusters were operating well beyond their expected service life cycles and that the spacecraft could continue in a stable sun-pointing state for approximately 40 more hours before it would run out of fuel, then lose altitude control and power. The fault was traced to leaking propellant from a ruptured oxidizer tank, potentially caused by a stuck valve. This was generating thrust, turning the spacecraft and preventing its solar panels from constantly pointing at the sun, vital to maintain its power supply. The astrobotic team worked the thrusters on Peregrine to restore store stable pointing, but this of course used up even more of the rapidly depleting oxidizer. Nonetheless, payloads aboard were activated, proving their space worthiness, and some were even able to gather data, such as the nature of the radiation environment between the Earth and the Moon. But the loss of the oxidizer meant that there would be no landing on the Moon. And during this time, Peregrine's onboard cameras were sending photos back down to Astrobotic, so I can only imagine the extra frustration of seeing the lander up there in space doing some of what it's supposed to do, but knowing it cannot reach its final destination and fully complete its mission. And the onboard instruments were collecting data and sending it back towards Earth, so a lot of it was working and it was traveling. One of Astrobotic statements said the lander was 94% of the way to the moon, over 200,000 miles. That is so far, but it was leaking propellant the whole time, and eventually 
it was going to run out. So the decision was made for Astrobotic to dispose of the craft rather than let it wander aimlessly through space, posing a potential collision hazard. Peregrine started to head back towards Earth, and its destination was some safe open water in the South Pacific. And as of this recording, late afternoon East Coast time on January 18th is when the lunar is expected to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. I think by the time this video comes out, it will have already happened. Now, I think why this is such a big deal is that if Peregrine had been able to land successfully, it would have been the first American mission in half a century to do so, and the first private venture to ever achieve that feat. Only government agencies from the US, Soviet Union, China, and India have managed controlled lunar landings to date. And Astrobotic was able to do some incredible things during this whole situation. Engineers were able to diagnose what was wrong with Peregrine and then eke out life out of the lander far beyond what was originally thought possible. And the payloads were activated, proving their space worthiness, and some were even able to collect data. And Astrobotic is definitely not done yet. They are getting a second crack later this year, when they try and land a NASA rover called Viper in the lunar south pole. Viper is this adorable little golf cart looking thing that will be tasked with mapping the distribution and concentration of water ice on the moon. So Astrobotics certainly isn't going anywhere. I saw this quote from Sean Cleaver, who's the Orion European Service Module Industrial Manager, who had a pretty good take on the whole situation. Space exploration is a learning game, especially at this stage. And we shouldn't look at this as a failure. We should look at this as an incredible engineering success. At one point, it was looking like this mission was doomed, but a team of engineers and scientists managed to work together and to problem solve and to restore some of the capabilities of the spacecraft and ultimately direct it back to Earth. I think that's actually pretty impressive. There's a lot that we can take away from this, but ultimately space travel is difficult and we're seeing that here. I think it's finding this balance between humility and determination when it comes to space travel. I think we're spoiled in a lot of ways because of how much of it actually works, but even when it doesn't work, it's still so impressive because of this never say die, on the fly fixes that these engineers and scientists are able to do. They never give up and they are very experienced and practiced in not giving up. And while I'm definitely sad for them, I think that part, that quality is what I'm, always in awe of. So RIP Peregrine wasn't meant to be, but there's always the next launch because you know there's always gonna be a next launch. And for those of you who saw my on the road Apollo 8 video recently, I just posted this awesome video over on my Patreon, which is a look back on the Apollo 8 mission 50 years later that NASA recently released. It features recent interviews with all three astronauts and their perspectives on the mission and the risks and what it was like to see the moon for the first time. So if you're interested in seeing that, head over to my Patreon, link is in the description. Okay, that's it for the video. Please let me know your thoughts about Peregrine in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Pitching yard programs in, coming into normal rates for that event. We have good hydraulic pressure on both engines, good chamber pressure on both engines, everything looking good.